to sing and worship the Lord one more time. Thank you, Jesus.
Amen. Everybody say thank you, Jesus. All right. We want to receive the midweek Bible study offering. Amen. Amen. God bless you as you prepare to give tonight. Many have been blessed this week. We haven't missed a meal unless we intentionally did. Amen. Card, the parking lot doesn't look like it's got a bunch of old rattle traps in it. <laughs> Some of y'all have got more than one car anymore. Amen. And they're pretty nice vehicles out there. You suppose maybe you could maybe give a little something for the Lord tonight to help pay the bills? Please don't forget your pledges that you have made for the chairs, for the upkeep of the building. Amen. It's necessary for those things to come in so we can take care of the house of God. Everybody say amen. Lord, we thank you for letting us be in your house and that all things work together for the good. I pray you'd bless this offering and supply the needs for its intended use, and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you as you bring your love offering. You may be seated tonight in Jesus' name on this beautiful Tuesday evening. The Word of God is so good, so much alive, so much needed in our lives. Oh, I want to speak to you tonight about the will of God for your life. The will of God, God's got a plan. You're not just a leaf blowing in the wind. You have purpose. You are needed. 
And it says in Romans, the 12th chapter, I beseech you, therefore, let's stand to our feet, everyone. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The will of God is always good, acceptable, and perfect. Your life will never be any better than being where God wants you to be. Amen. You may be seated. Now, this 12th chapter of the book of Romans came on the heels. In this book, it came after the Apostle Paul discussed some people that got out of God's will. And as I was driving down the road today, I was thinking about why the scripture says that God said, I was found of them that sought me not. Talking about the Gentiles. I was found of them that sought me not. I said, Lord, it says in Jeremiah, in the day you seek me, with all of your heart is the day you'll find me. And here the Gentiles didn't even seek the Lord, and they found him. How can I understand that, Lord? And it seemed like he spoke back and said, same thing in this chapter. Paul said, they didn't find him because they didn't seek him by faith, but they sought him by works. They sought to please God by doing what they thought God wanted them to do. Trusting in their good works. Folks, there are good works in everybody's lives, but that's not what's going to save us. Oh, we're seeking the Lord by faith tonight. That's how you're going to find God. You want to find the Lord? You want to find God's will? Are you looking for God's will? I'm reminded of a preacher that came and preached for us many years ago. He was a great man of God. He was in touch with the Lord. He was used of the Lord. I remember him holding his little finger up in the congregation. And he said, he pointed his little finger at the devil one day and said, Devil, there's more power in my little finger than what you got. I thought, boy, that's amazing. He was a mighty man of God. But he said, he left the church one time. He, he, he got burned out. He got frustrated. And he thought it was time for him to go. And he did go. But the church went down and it was destroyed. Never came. It, it, it fell apart and no longer existed in that city for many years. And he looked back in retrospect and he realized he, he left out of the will of God. And he's pastored in several other places and evangelized. But he said, the terrible thing is, I never felt like I was ever in the will of God again. Folks, there really is a feeling that you're in the will of God. But if you're not careful, you can kind of ignore that feeling. You can take it for granted. I know I did. One time when I was a young man, I, I uh, had an aunt that lived near the Bible college where I was going to go to, and, and uh, I was invited to live with her, and I didn't have to pay room and board at the Bible college, which was big money. I had uh, a little job as a janitor at an uh, elementary school emptying trash and cleaning up, you know, the floor. I was just a kid, 18 years old, and, and, uh, and uh, I was just, I had 
I had made a move in life, and I was excited about it. And it was just so good. I could have prayer at that little school by myself. I was the only one there. I'd get in the prayer in a little closet, man, and I'd have me a prayer meeting, and and uh, I'd go home about 10:30 and get up and go to school and come home in the afternoon, go to work about three o'clock or so, and it was just fine and dandy and wonderful. But there was one little problem. I wasn't in on all the fun that was going on at the college. I mean, there was ping pong I could be playing. And there was basketball. They had a basketball court. And then there were the girls. Hello. Did y'all know God made girls? <laughs> well, I really didn't. I really wasn't concerned about the girls. I just threw that in to see if y'all would laugh a little, but nobody laughed. But I, I'm thankful I didn't have a girl problem, okay? If you've got a girl problem, I feel sorry for you. I'm not going to go there because if you've got a boy problem, you've got a problem. Nonetheless, one day after one semester, I decided that I wanted to enjoy the campus life. And so I just moved on campus, quit my job, thought I could find another one. Found out that jobs don't come too easy sometimes. Found out that if you have a job, you better hang on to it. And I'd go to the prayer room and I felt this feeling that I had missed the Lord. And he'd give me a package deal. And I was saving all kind of money. And I was having free room and board. And I just kind of messed up. And for about four months I didn't have a job and I couldn't pay my bills and I was worried and I was scared but God had mercy upon me it was a good lesson I finally did get a job and I got over but I, I was just amazed that such a seemingly a trivial thing could be a big deal with God that really set the tone for the rest of my life. I want you folks to know I started praying, God, I want your will. I want to be in the will of God. I want everything I do to be in your plan according to your will, oh Lord. And, uh, you know, I, I've been in the will of God ever since. Hallelujah. It feels good to be in the will of God. Amen. Amen. Good thing. Well, not every good thing happens when you're in the will of God, you know. I, I, do, I don't want to paint a picture of uh, that's not really real. I don't want to make you think that if you're having a little opposition or adversity that you're not in the will of God. Because you do experience adversity, opposition, problems, even when you're in God's will. But oh, something about being in God's will that is wonderful. That you may prove. Oh, I beseech you got to present your body a living sacrifice. You've got to seek the Lord for his will. If you will only commit your way to the Lord. He will direct your path. God directed David's path. David was that giant killer you remember. David was that legend in his own time. David was that man after God's own heart. David 
sang songs and soothed the evil spirit that tormented King Saul. But one day David decided to take his life into his own hands and not do it like God wanted him to do it. Oh, my, 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 my. Oh, my. Everybody say, my. My, 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 my. The man of God, the prophet, Gad, came to David and said, David, don't leave the land of Judah. Stay in the borders of Israel. Not just Israel, but the, the tribe of Judah. But you see, there was one problem. There was a, a king that was trying to kill him. David was in the will of God. But he had to dodge a javelin that came at him. Saul got a devil in him. And since David killed the giant, <laughs> Saul got jealous. And he threw a javelin two times and David had to avoid out of his presence. And, and now the prophet Gad is telling him, you got you to gotta hang pretty close to where the king's at. Why? I'm running for my life. It would be so easy for me to cross the border into the land of the Philistines and, and then Saul wouldn't bother me over there. Well, he dodged around for many, maybe years. We don't know. There's no timetable that's attached to it. But eventually one day, David said in his heart, that's a dangerous place to have a conversation. I said, that's a dangerous place to uh, decide what you're going to do. David said in his heart, one day Saul's going to get me. He tried to get me here and he tried to get me there. He's been after me. He's a king, and I'm just a, I'm just a nobody. So I think I realize that Gad told me not to leave the land of... Mm. But after all, we've got to look out for ourselves, you know. So he gets his 400 men, and they go to the land of the Philistines. For 16 months, David's out of the will of God. Mm-hmm. And during that time, he became a bandit, and he stole and plundered and made a living out of stealing things. It might not have been the people of God, but he didn't have any business doing that. He became a bloody man, and God said, you're not going to build a temple later on. He may have learned how to transport the Ark of the... He may have got a spirit of Philistines on him because he did transport the Ark of the Covenant like the Philistines did. He might have even got a spirit of adultery on him over there in the land of the Philistines. And that might have been the reason he looked out over a window one day. I mean, you know, you might can trace a lot of David's problems back for that 16 short months that he was out of the will of God. And I've come to tell you this tonight, ladies and gentlemen. The will of God may have a few obstacles in it. The devil may fight you. The devil doesn't want you to be in God's will. I've seen people take their life and their spirituality in their own hands and decide they're going to do this and they're going to do that. And if I told them, no, don't do that, they'd do it anyway. So I just leave them alone. A disaster is the Oh, I wish everybody could just do what the man of God says. <laughs> I just wish everybody could commit the way to the Lord and let him direct your path. And whatever he tells you to do, just do it. Oh, I wish everybody could just hear from God and have a smooth life and have the Lord working in their lives. And Oh, I read in the Bible about somebody else that was in the will of God, I mean, Jacob spent 20 years in the land of Padanaram, that's ancient Syria. He lived with his father-in-law. He was a good sheep herder. He was a good property manager. He made his father-in-law rich. 
made himself rich, came out of that land with many herds and many flocks and many children and a big household. God said, Jacob, go back home. But boy, when he started going back home, did he have problems. <laughs> I'm telling you, Jacob had some difficulties. And you know, if you were to go to Jacob and say, Jacob, how's things going? Well, he'd probably say, not so good. Since I came back, Rachel died in childbirth. Rachel was going to have a baby, and it didn't work out. She was my favorite wife, you know. She was the love of my life. It's kind of rough, you know, when you go through something like that. Let us know all that happened to you, Jacob. Oh, no, I got a long list of things here. Besides the fact that we're running out of food and there's a famine in the land, my oldest boy had an affair with one of my concubines and he defiled his father's bed, Reuben. It's kind of rough, you know. And then, of course, Joseph went missing. Where's Joseph? My favorite son. What happened to Joseph? He didn't know it, but Joseph was in the will of God. But as far as he knew, Joseph wasn't alive. Oh, no. Well, Jacob, is that all that's wrong? Yeah, I'm in the will of God, all right. But, you know, two of my grandkids got killed. Two of my grandsons not only got killed, but God killed them. God killed two of my children because they were wicked. What else? Well, I sent some kids. I sent 10 of my boys down to Egypt and there was some dude down there that, that just trash-talked them, treated them like they was bad, accused them of lying, and he kept one of my boys, Simeon's down there in Egypt, in prison. And, and that guy, whoever he is down there, I don't know who that dude is, but he really is causing havoc in my family. Of course, it was Joseph, you know. <laughs> uh, that guy has persuaded my, two, my ten boys, well, there were nine then, that they can't come back unless they take my youngest son, Benjamin. And we're starving to death. And I'm afraid that if I let go of Benjamin, he won't never come back. That's my favorite boy. And they keep telling me the grain is running low. And I'm pulled in different directions. This is killing me. And I don't care if God did try to change my name from Jacob to Israel. I don't feel like being Israel. I'm Jacob, okay? I done fell back into that old way of thinking that I was before I had that wrestling match with the angel. All these things are against me. Everything I try to do is falling apart. I thought that if I would do what God said to do, that it, everything would be all right. It, it don't make sense. God told me. You know, in a way, I was better off back down there with my father-in-law. He was cheating me as much as he could. He was, he was double dealing. He was breaking uh, agreements all the time. But in a way, I was better off in Padanaram than I am here and God told me to come here. I don't know what's going to happen next. 
I just, I'm just hunkered down, just ready for whatever happens next. Surely you don't have that many problems, do you? Surely, hey, there's a bunch of people in the will of God out here in this congregation. But the devil would like nothing more than to cloud your mind and to make you believe a lie and make you want to do something that you want to do. In fact, there's a new way of finding the will of God now. Did y'all know that? The new way to find the will of God is to pray that God will take the desire out of your heart and if he doesn't, then it must be his will. Did you know that? We got a modern new way of Pentecostal way of thinking. If it's in my heart and I want to do it, and I ask the Lord to take it out of my heart and he don't do it, then I can do it. You know, that's kind of like Balaam. Balaam, that old, prophet of God said Lord can I go down there and curse Israel and God said no he wanted to so bad because there was big money big money Lot wanted to go to Sodom because there was big money there was pleasure there was entertainment there was Neat people in Sodom. There were artists in Sodom. There was music in Sodom. Abraham wanted to be in the will of God. Abraham said, you go ahead. I'm going to stay out here where the stars are shining, where I'm hearing from God, where God's talking to me. Mm. Everybody say amen. And of course, Balaam got on his mule and started going down toward uh, Moab. <laughs> and an angel of the Lord stood out there with a big sword in his hand and said, You know what? I'm going to give you a real close haircut. So close that you won't need another haircut. And lucky, yeah. I do believe in luck, but not for a child of God. Lucky for Balaam, the mule saw the angel and stopped. And he started beating on that poor old donkey, and the donkey started talking. And the donkey, if the, you know, if, if a donkey starts talking, you'd think he'd shut up and not be so mad and upset. But finally, the angel spoke up and said, why are you beating up on your poor donkey? He's more spiritual than you are. He saw me standing in the path, and you couldn't even see me. Folks, I want everybody in this building to earnestly seek the Lord for God's will for your life. Because it could be the difference between heaven and hell. You might not get a second chance. Hello. My wife and I, when we started winking and blinking at one another, we decided, well, we, we think we know what we ought to do. I felt like I heard from God. And I think maybe she felt like she heard from, did you hear from God about me? But we decided that we was going to go on a three-day fast. Three. Everybody hold up three fingers. Three. And we didn't eat supper those three days. Uh, we uh, went cold turkey for three days and nights. 
We earnestly sought the Lord. Amen. I don't want my wife to get mixed up with the wrong guy. And she didn't want me to get mixed up with the wrong girl. I'm thankful that, you know why you need to know the will of God? Because whenever you have a little disagreement, you start questioning, well, did I find the will of God or not? And the devil comes along and says, no, you didn't find the will of God. Oh, well, let's, let's get a do-over. Oh, I, I guess I'm not preaching to anybody here tonight. I, I'm just up here taking up space and time. Ladies and gentlemen, please understand. After you get married, you're going to have to stay married. Even if you don't have the right one. And it's a long, long I mean, it's rough enough when you got the will of God. The Bible says, such shall have trouble in the flesh. What does that mean? It means just what it says. <laughs> oh, folks, the will of God is really important. And you need to be in the will of God. And, you know, I don't want to meddle with anybody's life. I'm not into telling you what God wants you to do. I am not into running people's lives. Amen. You ought to be able to tell whether it's God's will or not on your own. Now, there have been times when I have intervened and said things to people, but it don't usually do any good. You're just wasting your time. When people get their mind made up, let them go. Because when they step out of the will of God and they go through great tribulation, maybe, just maybe, they might be willing to be obedient to a man of God. I got the fear of God in because Jonah got out of the will of God and he really had a smooth life, didn't he? Jonah was on his way to a Mediterranean cruise. He was going to Joppa. He got on the ship. He disobeyed what God said to do. And he got him a, a, a cabin down in the bow of the ship. And he was just having himself a good time until the ship started bucking. And it started rocking. And he climbs to the top. And there's a squall. And there is a terrible storm. And he winds up getting thrown overboard. And he winds up in the belly of a whale. Or a big fish. It says big fish. We don't know what it was. But trust me, folks, it wasn't a very good cruise. And when he got delivered from that belly, he was a different man. <laughs> yeah, some of y'all are going to be different people whenever you find out what God really wants you to do. And you're going to have a cross to bear. Hello. Oh, yes, it was Paul the Apostle. God spoke to Paul and said, you're going to bear witness of me in Rome. But there was a lot of obstacles between him and Rome. He got put on a ship, and the ship encountered a terrible storm. He experienced what's called a shipwreck. I've never been in a shipwreck. But for some miraculous reason, as the ship was falling apart, everybody grabbed a board. Everybody grabbed a life jacket. All 300 and some odd of them made it safe to shore, including Paul. Man, it must have felt good to get on solid ground. It must have felt good to 
be able to not be in the middle of the ocean. And they were just building a fire. Oh, let's build a fire and get warmed up. And a snake crawls out of the fire and latches onto his hand. Well, God, I thought you told me that I was in your will and now this is happening to me. I'm, look at this. I got bit by a snake. <laughs> I'm just going to throw in the towel. No, that ain't what Paul said and did. He said, I'm going to Rome. I don't care what happens. I may swell up and suffer. I may have problems here and problems there, but it's the will of God for me to testify of the gospel of the grace of God in the city of Rome. You can be smack dab in the middle of the will of God and bad things can happen. Things can take place that are really unfortunate. But you're going to have to understand and make it up in your mind. This is what God told me to do. I heard from God. This is where God wants me to be. This is where God has put me. This is the plan of God for my life. I want the good and the perfect and acceptable will of God for my life. And then somebody comes along and says, well, there's a perfect will and there's a permissive will. Permissive will. You know, if you've got a good job, hang on to that good job. Don't let it go. If you've got a good car, hang on to that car till it wears out. You don't need a car just because it's got a good body style or leather seats or power windows. <laughs> oh, I'm not saying you, you, you know, but because there's people that can decide what they're going to do and the way they're going to live and the way they're going to work. and I've seen people leave the place where God filled them with the Holy Ghost and it didn't work out too good for them. So the long and the short of my sermon tonight is we have to die daily. Die to what you want to do. Die to your own pleasure because God didn't save you just for you to have pleasure he didn't save you just to give you everything you wanted he saved you because he wants you to be in his will everybody say amen Proverbs 24 and 10 says if thou faint in the day of adversity Thy strength is small. Don't faint. Just because you're going through something. Hang in there. Jumping out of the boat is not the answer. Everybody say amen. My sermons are getting shorter and shorter. Maybe there's some comments or questions from people out there. Anybody got a comment? Isaac, or you were telling about Joseph's dad and all that. I always think about Naomi, how the Bible says that they, you know, they decided there was a reason that they needed to move. You know, they needed to move to Moab because there was a famine. And so they, but they were only going to go down there for a little while. And it, in my mind, I'm thinking they know they really don't need to do that. But it, it was their way of working their own problem out. And so they... Uh, really went against God's word by going to there, you know. But, and then, of course, all the things that happened, and she lost both of her, both of her children and her husband, and ended up came back, and she, when she came back, she said she was bitter. She lost pretty much everything she had. So I'm thinking, you know, sometimes people just <clears throat> make decisions on the spur of a moment, and I think every decision we make, we need to really prayerfully consider because the bad thing is, with Naomi, her children didn't get another chance. And that's what happens so many times, is people's children don't get a second chance. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Sister Con, for that contribution. Anyone else have a comment? A question? Oh, glory to God. 
Amen. How many feels like you're in the will of God for your life? I do. I feel like I'm in the will of God. Let's stand to our feet, everybody, in Jesus' name. Oh, Lord, we want your will for everything that we do. We don't want to do it our way, but we want to do it your way. Not my will, but thy will be done. Oh, thank you for your will. Thank you that you've got a plan. We don't want to think we could ever improve on your plan, Lord. Your plans are better than our plans. Your ways are higher than our ways. Your thoughts are better and higher than our thoughts will ever be. I bind the devil in the name of Jesus that would like to bring confusion upon God's people. I plead the blood of Jesus here today. Lord, let us walk in the Spirit and not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen.